I first got involved in Magic the Gathering back in 1993, which was a couple weeks after the game launched. I had the opportunity to, to join in right at the beginning, it was wonderful. My involvement kind of started with trying to put together rules and rulings for the game. As everyone who's ever played Magic knows, it can get incredibly complicated, and the early cards were even more confusing. So I spent a bunch of time working with the rules, kind of as a volunteer basis for a while. And in uh, 1994, Wizards picked me up as a part-time employee to help manage their rules for them. Each of you has a deck, or library, of 40 cards. I ended up doing that for a decade, um, helping kind of evolve the rules from the early editions to 8th edition when we had really fine-grained, uh, nicely controlled rules. So it was a very fun journey for me, and uh, during that period I was kind of the only official person doing it. So everyone who trained to become a judge or otherwise master the game uh, ended up studying the D'Angelo ruling space as their primary study. Uh, when I retired in 2003, uh, Wizards of the Coast put together their own website effectively to kind of replace the work I'd been doing for them. Um, but it was a fun journey, it was a good, good part of my life. I uh, ended up abandoning or kind of stepping away from Magic for a little while, for a whole decade. I joined Cryptic in 2007, worked my way through learning the Cryptic business, and in 2015, about a decade after I left uh, the Magic game, I found myself in a position where we were trying to figure out what our next title was going to be. Where do we go next with Cryptic's games? We'd already built Star Trek Online, we'd built Neverwinter, and it really kind of gotten the Dungeons and Dragons property behind us, and we were super excited to figure out what our next game would be. We we're full in whiteboards! with all the different places we could go. And finally someone looked at me and said, why don't we do Magic the Gathering? And I said, well, there's tons of reasons why we shouldn't do that. And I thought for a minute, and I go, no, there's no reason why we shouldn't do this. Let's do it. We put together a pitch and I got on the phone to Wizards of the Coast and said, all right, we want to come up and pitch this game to you. Um, I sat down at the table with Elaine and, and the whole Magic team. They stopped me and said, all right, I just want you to know, Stephen, we get pitches for Magic games all the time. And we always say no. We're gonna say no to your pitch too. You're here because we know you. You're here because you got a relationship with the game, but we're gonna end up saying no. We're, we're just gonna hear you out though. I'm like, all right, that's kind of a great start to a pitch. <laughs> but we went to it. And so by the end of the pitch though, I finished up my pitch and there was silence in the room. It was a really long hanging silence. And at the end of the silence, they said, oh my gosh, we want this game. And uh, that was kind of the birth of it. One of the things Cryptic prides itself on doing is building a um, master knowledge base inside the game, uh, game teams. Our teams need to know that IP as well as the IP owners know it. And we've done this with Star Trek. Uh, our writers write stuff for the IP that gets added right in. We've done it for Dungeons and Dragons and doing it for Magic is gonna be another challenge. Magic is kind of a difficult IP to master. It's scattered across 15,000 cards, about 100 novels and, and art books comic books, and trying to pull all that knowledge together was a lot of work. So during our first year of production, we pulled together a library, it's actually behind me right now, with all the books and all the resources we could find, and started getting the team to read through it. Now, I had an advantage in that I'd worked on the IP for 10 years, and I'd already read kind of half of what had ever been produced. Um, but I went back and I personally reread everything, <laughs> and uh, wrote synopses and, uh, and reports that could be used by the others as reference material. We did training classes, we walked people through stories, trying to get our whole team ramped up um, because you have to know the IP as well as the IP holder. The new design team that was put together um, in 2007 that led the Magic IP um, really took the IP in new directions. I think they did wonderful things with it, and I think that was probably the biggest thing for me to pick up was the story-based Planeswalker um, that they had built around the, the Gatewatch. That was not something that really existed in the early part of the IP. And really shifting the IP to be character-centric and about people and stories as opposed to just about worlds was a really big shift and I think a very valuable one for them to make. Uh, it does feel wonderful to come full circle with this IP, to have spent an early part of my life, 10 years of it, kind of really deeply entrenched in it. And then and later in my career to have that opportunity to take something that I was have been a fan of my whole life and to truly bring that to life in a game um, is wonderful. I think one of the things I'm most excited about, and I think all the fans out there are gonna be excited about, is to take all those cards that you've been looking at as 2D images and say, what would it be like to go in that card and look around the corner? Um, and the opportunity to put together a video game and see it all in motion and to look around that corner and to see the worlds from more than just these stills, I think is gonna be a really potent, fun thing to do.